So let's start our first lesson on how to write a letter. It's a letter writing task. Alright. So basically the IELTS general writing task 1 measures your ability to communicate about common issues about common practical issues I can say you have 20 minutes to respond to that question by writing a letter to a person a company or an institution that depends on the question that you receive and we are going to cover that in detail in this video today your response remember your response is just 30 percent of your writing score so basically of the nine bands that we talk about in IELTS your this answer only corresponds to about 30 percent which is just three bands of the total bands needed and rest of the six bands come from your writing task 2 which is essay and we will discuss about that separately in another video first of all you need to identify the type of letter it is it could be formal semi-formal or informal so let's see what is a formal letter a formal letter is a letter which is written to a company or someone you do not know it's a stranger okay you are writing a letter to that person discussing some very formal issue it cannot be a personal letter another type is semi-formal so maybe you're asked to write a letter to your neighbors or a a semi-formal letter is also a letter to a friend with a situation concerning work or business. For example, you are asked to write a letter to a friend who owns a business of your interest and you are writing a letter to him or her uh, expressing your interest towards working with him. So that is not an informal but a semi-formal letter. And the last type of a letter is a letter to a friend, maybe uh, for invitation purposes or uh, going for a vacation or thanking him for something he has done for you. All right, moving on. Let's now understand uh, what exactly is the format of the question. Format of the question of the letter. Well, first of all, a letter will always be presented to you with three bullet points this is mandatory to check that you have three bullet points like this in your letter in the same order and you need to answer that in the same order if you fail to answer that in the same order then you will result in lower scores which we do not want right okay after that another thing you need to know is you need to remember these key points they are very very important highly important for seven or eight bands score so you need to write over 150 words because the question says at least the question says you must write at least 150 words so at least means you need to write 150 or beyond 150 so I think the ideal length is between 150 to 170 you don't need to mention any addresses you don't need to say where you are writing from no that is not required in IELTS we have done that in our schools but it is not required for IELTS test third make sure you do not commit any spelling or punctuation errors by punctuation I mean the use of commas semicolon colon you must use commas at least also before you start writing down you must plan your letter very very important you must go through all the three bullet points that we talked about in the last uh, slide uh, plan your letter and just brainstorm what you need to write in that letter okay because a letter always asks you to uh, give reasons or explanation or describe the situation so you need to think about those bullet points much in advance the moment you receive them and uh, each bullet point I would say just 45 to 50 words are sufficient to cross the limit 150 that is intended from you moving on let's now understand uh, after you have identified the type of letter let's now understand the next step 
is opening and closing this is very very must remember your ielts examiners do not really um, read word by word but they really do read the opening and the closing of your letters and they decide your bands after doing that they just go through skim and scam your letter the bullet points all right so opening and closing uh, for all the three types of letters is very important for example for the formal letter you just say dear sir or madam for semi formal you just say you need to write mr or mrs but for informal because it's a letter to a friend you can just say samantha madri you can just use names because it's informal and for semi formal mr and mrs is a must that is why it is semi formal that means it is somewhere between formal and informal how do you close a formal letter so there is a quick tip so because your uh, opening starts with dear sir you can use sincerely semi formal you can use yours faithfully and then you write full name okay so you write full name here this is two means full name here also you must write full name but when you're writing to a friend you can just write first name that will be more than sufficient okay let's quickly um, you know after you've learned to address the letter correctly the next step is to learn to start the letter appropriately now for a formal letter like we have already discussed that you start with dear sir or madam this you have learned then you must this is again the part of the starting so these are we are helping you with certain prompts that you can use in your letter um so i'll call it after using this you must leave a line and then write the purpose of writing the letter okay so after you have uh, learned to address the letter correctly the next step is to learn to start the letter appropriately now for a formal letter you need to talk to the point by getting down to business straight away do not try to be friendly you do not know the person that you are writing to so we start by writing the purpose statement so in the last slide we talked about how to start a letter so you start a formal letter by writing sir or madam and sometimes uh test takers this is already provided in your answer sheet it is already there in the question that you start the letter like this and then you quickly move down to the purpose so these are certain prompts that we are helping you with to start writing your letter we either call it an opening statement or we call it the purpose statement so basically depending on the question you can start by saying i am writing to complain remember always after i am writing you directly tell the verb i am writing to complain i am writing to ask i am writing to request remember that you don't need to say i am writing this letter to of course they know that you're writing a letter okay so i'm writing to complain about or i'm writing to express another verb directly so this really makes an impression to the reader that you are you know you have the ability you have the writing skills to talk straight i'm writing to ask about i'm writing to request about and remember there are no contractions in the formal letter moving on to the semi formal letter it starts with the uh, you know mr and second name here also we say i'm writing to discuss the recent changes about so we are giving you prompts to uh, write your purpose statement in a very purpose statement in a very uh, what do you say you know impressive way so i'm glad to inform you if there's something happy and again you can use contractions here once or twice because like i said semi formal is a mix of formal and informal so informal i go back to this particular side and tell you that informal letter for example you will say i would okay something something and in informal you use a lot of contraction so we come to that so in semi formal it is a mix so you want to say i would but you can write like this i'd like to something something 
okay after that we come down to the informal letter so it it's always a name because you're writing a letter to a friend so you use the name of your friend then you can use many contractions you will be very happy to know that here you can use contractions and your examiner will also be happy to see that you've used contractions so you're indirectly telling the examiner that i am aware it's informal so i need to write an informal style i'm writing to invite you how have you been it's been so long since we've written to each other and i'm so glad you're planning to visit my country as i'd love to host you this time as well so these are again the purpose statements after reading the question after reading the three bullet points you understand what exactly you want to write and you start like this and then this is just an opening statement all right remember this is opening statement and after this you again leave a line and you answer first bullet point second bullet point and third bullet point okay i hope we are doing well so far now we'll be talking about something really really important is the do's and don'ts for a 7 and 8 band answer so remember as already discussed always remember to use contractions in informal and semi formal answers so i'm assuming that you are understanding that once you have written answers you can write your answers and you can send to us and we will review your answers for free we will help you with lot of grammar and if you are having any spelling errors we'll do that for you you just need to sit down write a letter and send it to us and we will be very happy to help you although we are not word of phone but we want you to score eight bands okay so the first tip is which is clear you must cross one you must cross 150 words that means you must write more than 150 words always remember paraphrase the words you provided in the question so for example the question says uh, uh paraphrasing does not mean the use of synonyms paraphrasing also means using the same word in different forms so um so for example competition you can use competitive competitiveness to compete these are all the paraphrasing words for competition okay if the question says ask then you can use request that is also paraphrasing so you must show variety in your answer if you want to score more than 7 and 8 bands that is what we are talking about today for example use apologetic or apologize in place of apology because the question will say write a letter of apology or apologize then you can use these three in place of each other next is to remember to proofread your answer before you submitting any answer you must go through what you have written yourself you must go through the entire answer word by word make sure your answer contains no spelling this is the first very uh, basic necessity to score more than 7 or 8 man no so zero spelling mistakes and zero zero mistakes i will say because even if your answer is very well written but if it has mistakes then you will go down so the structure of letter includes seven steps please score eight bands so um, the first is the dear and whatever it is depending on the type of the letter after that there is an opening statement that also we discussed in the the purpose of the reason then it is paragraph 1 which is first bullet point i will write bullet point as bp first bullet point second bullet point in the same order and third bullet point again in the same order and then you have closing statement for example for a formal letter looking forward for an earliest response so always remember that opening statement and closing statement will always be one liner it is not a paragraph it is just a line okay then you sign off yours sincerely yours faithfully yours or warm wishing whatever and then you write your name okay so this is a seven step answer if you write your letter exactly like it then i am sure there is no way you cannot score eight bands after this i'd like to talk about uh, 
the marking criteria please do not miss out on the last segment of our video which is the marking scheme so there are four factors on which you are uh, marked in both your writing tasks so let's discuss all the four so these four are followed in your task one as well as in task two whether you're writing for general whether you're writing for academic okay so first is your uh, task achievement how much task you achieved how much bullet point you answered whether you answered them according to their needs or not so again you know do everything that you are asked to do give a full developed response include or cover all the necessary points and write 150 words okay then the next criteria is coherence and cohesion which means you present your ideas logically okay there should be sense to your answer you use the structured paragraphs and write so points stick together make sense and convey your message clearly you don't need to write a lot of stories but you want to make sure that the words that you use are giving the sense that you want to say and again i'd like to uh, tell you that after this video please do write back to us uh, with an answer and our team will send you back your response checked the third marking criterion is lexical resource so here you use a wide range of vocabulary they want to see that you have used a lot of different types of words okay naturally correctly and fluently use correct spellings we've talked about it again and again you use the right words you make the right choice of words and you use the correct forms of words for example past present future you must know what you want to say uh, if I'm talking about past tense, it does not mean I only use uh, <clears throat> second form, you know, that's past tense, but you can also use I had, for example, or I used to, right? So this is variety to past tense, or if you're just writing active sentences, start writing passive okay so if you follow these steps i'm sure you will score eight pants and that is the reason we are sitting here helping you making these videos our team is making a lot of efforts to get to you reach out to you because you are making a lot of efforts to score eight pants and here we are and the last is grammar range and accuracy again I have already discussed about it here so apart from giving lexical resource means vocab and grammar range and accuracy means something that I discussed here doing this will take you to eight pan straight so last but not least practice your answers every day look out for more videos where we will share a sample answer as well and thank you so much for watching this video of VAC. Do not forget to like and share. I know it's a cliche, but you won't believe uh, how our team is working towards doing all this for you. And we are hoping that this lesson has taught you a lot about IRS Writing Task 1 for general test takers. And also that you score highly in your upcoming exam of all the best for more IELTS lectures, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.